Hello, bonjour, ciao, good day, konnichiwa. Hello students, this is Mr. Mayor here with another lesson on spherical mirrors, um, looking at reflection. So today we're going to do some problems uh, with applications of the mirror formula and the magnification formula. So we'll be looking at um, the properties of concave and convex mirrors and locating the position of objects and images of objects and talking about the nature or the characteristics of those images. So here we go. Um, but first, a joke, a silly one. Why did the chicken cross the Mobius strip? To get to the same side. <laughs> if you don't know what a Mobius strip is, I'm sorry that I haven't told you up until this point. Okay, um, so here we go. Oh, one more joke. Two atoms bump into each other. One says, I think I've lost an electron. The other asks, are you sure? To which the first replies, I'm positive. Yeah, I know, sorry. All right, let's move on, let's do this. Okay, so the first problem we're gonna look at is from um, chapter 17 of the reflection textbook or chapter of the textbook. So here we go. So I've, I've just highlighted the first part of the question and the important parts of the question. So question 13, we have a concave mirror of focal length 10 centimeters and it is used to produce an image on a screen that is half the size of the object. We need to find the position of the object and also the position of the image. Okay, so let's write some of those things down. Okay, so, all right, here we go. So we're looking at a concave mirror. So remember a concave mirror is the one that reflects on the inside, right? So you have your focal point here, your rays come in and focus like that. Okay, so something like that. That's our concave mirror. And we have a focal length, what was it 10 centimeters? We were given, let me just bring this back in, we're given that um, the image is, the image on the screen that is produced um, must be a real image, okay? That's the, if it's a virtual image, you won't, you won't get an image on a screen. So that, that's a giveaway, that's telling us it's a real image. So let's write that down. Uh, we're getting a real image. Um, now what does that mean? It just means that everything's positive, okay? With a concave mirror, uh, and I can flick over to another handout, which you, you guys should have, you should be familiar with, this one here. So this runs through uh, all the cases of images that are formed in concave mirrors. So if we look at the first one here, we have, we have a real image. It's on the same side of the mirror as the object. Uh, same with the second one, same with the third one. Case four, there is no image. Um, case five, we have a virtual image. Right, so here we have an image which is on the other side of the mirror. So that's the only case, right, where we use a concave mirror and we have a virtual image, which means it's the only case where um, we get a negative dimension, we get V is a negative number. Okay, so everything generally to the left of the mirror is positive, everything to the right is negative. So you can see in all these, all these cases here, case one, case two, case three, case four, not really case four, but the first three anyway, um, we have only positive dimensions, okay? So that means here, real image implies that V is a positive, okay? And of course, we already know that U will be positive and F will be positive, because that is always the case. This is always the case for a concave mirror. Good, all right, what, what else do we have here? We have that the image on the screen, the height of the image, is half the size of the object, okay? So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us something about magnification, in fact, because we know, if we look up here, you can see magnification is the ratio of the image height to the object height. So we have a relationship here between image height and object height. So if we, if we organize that in a way, we can say HI over HO is a half and that's just the magnification, okay? So why is that important? Why is that useful? Well, it tells us something about the relationship between U and V, okay? As you can see back up here, magnification also talks about the, the ratio of V over U, so the distance to the image uh, versus the distance to the object. Okay, so that's useful information. So let's, let's write that in here. Um, so now we know that V over U has that same ratio. Okay, now, lastly, well, just last bit on this anyway, we can form a, a kind of a, a useful equation out of that. 
we can get that u is equal to two lots of v. Okay, I'll make that look more like a u. There we go. U is equal to two lots of v. All right, so um, I think at this point, maybe it's a good idea to draw a diagram. So let's, let's sketch in a kind of a, a concave mirror. And with that concave mirror, we'd like to have a principal axis, which runs kind of through here. Now we know that everything, let me move this up a bit. We know that everything will be on this side of the mirror. Okay, so let's just place a mark for where the focal point will be and the center of curvature, we'll call that F, call that C. Remember always with mirrors that C is equal to 2F, okay, meaning that the focal point or the focal length, let's say the focal length is half the distance to the center of curvature, in other words, the radius of, of the circle. Okay, good. So we know F is 10. We know it's 10 centimeters from here to here. Um, we don't know where our object is, although we know that uh, the image that is formed is half the size of the object. Now we can, um, we can pretty much figure out, just from this handout here, uh, what case we're looking at. Because uh, in terms of the image being smaller than the object, which is what we're saying here, that the image is half the size of the object, um, there's only really one case, right? if we look through these cases here, um, well, we exclude the virtual image, the last one, because we know it's a real image. Okay, remember, we, we figured out it's a real image. So we can, we can ignore that last case where, um, well, the, the image is magnified anyway. So we can ignore it for two reasons. So coming back up here, uh, where's, where's a case where the image is reduced? It's case one. Okay, so we're looking at case one. Um, so we know, looking at that, that the object is outside of C, outside the center of curvature. So our object is somewhere out here. And then we know the image will be located somewhere between C and F, somewhere down here, right? And it will be, let's, let's talk about it over here, the image, we can, we can see that the image will be real, inverted, and reduced. And that's all consistent. That's all consistent with what we've been saying um, leading up to this point. So if you, if you desire, and I, I really like to do this, it just feels complete if I do this, put in a few rays just to um, justify, verify that, you know, that's pretty much the location of the image. So if I, if I throw a parallel ray from the top of my object, right, across parallel to the principal axis, that is, um, then it reflects through the focus, something like that. So there's one ray I could, I could use, and then we have another ray that's coming down from the top of the object through the focal point reflecting off the mirror, parallel, something like that. And there's our second ray. Okay, that's ray one, and that's ray two. Now, so that's kind of indicating where our image should be. So I'll just kind of, I'm being a bit really, a bit, bit fussy here, but anyway. Right, so that's the image. That's the object. And I'll just write in here that this thing here it's always important to realize that this is the principal axis, okay? So it's important. Good. So that ray diagram gives us a pretty good idea um, as to where the image is, okay? Now we know, remember, we know that um, the relationship between u and, and v uh, is such that um, u is twice the distance from the mirror that v is. So we know that whatever this distance is, so if we, if we set up a kind of a tangent line to the to this point on the mirror here, we can then measure our distances and we can say, okay, this distance from here to here will be, that will be V, that's a distance to the image. Let's slide this up a bit. And then the distance from here, which is pretty much where the object is. So this distance from here to the mirror will be U. Okay, so the rest, the rest of this just involves uh, applying the, um, the formulas so let's come up here now so let's let's apply the mirror formula so we're going to apply the mirror formula in order to figure out what these distances u and v are okay so here we go so mirror formula is one on f equals one on u plus one on v uh, f we know is equal to 10 so there's going to be one on 10 uh, one on u is well we'll just call that u but now let's use this relationship here right so we can call that asterisk. So we're going to use this relationship here to replace V in the formula with U. In fact, 
No, I'll do this the other way around. I got that back to front, never mind. So what I've written here is still okay, but the problem is we have U and V. I just want either U or either V. Turns out I'll replace U with 2V. So that's going to be my next line. 1 on 10 equals 1 over 2V plus 1 over V. And probably the best way to solve it from here is to look at your common denominator. Um, so we've got 2V here, we've got V here. So let's make both fractions over 2V. That stays as 1 over 2V. This will be 2 over 2V. So we, we increase this fraction by a factor of 2, top and bottom. It's the same fraction. 1 on V is equal to 2 on 2V. Now we have a common denominator there, and we'll bring our 1 on 10 down on the left here. Um, so now we can look at that as just 1 plus 2 over 2V. Alright, so a little bit more fiddling around with this. Um, we've got 3 over 2V, 1 over 10 here. Uh, let's reciprocate, or we could just do some cross multiplication. So, in other words, let's just do this sort of stuff here where the 2V comes up here. The 3 stays where it is, the 10 goes with the 3, and we're no longer looking at fractions. So we have 2V is equal to 30, we have V is equal to 15. Brilliant. So that's, and, and we know that everything's going to be positive, remember? We said that back over here, U, uh, V is positive, U is positive, F is positive. Um, so that's right. So we're saying the distance from here to here is 15 centimetres. And if we go back to this relationship here, we can see that u is 2 times v, so u must be 2 times 15, therefore u is equal to 30 centimetres. So we have um, the distance, right, or the position uh, for the image. So this is the image position relative to the mirror, of course. And this one here is the object position relative to the mirror, and that's consistent with what we see and what we've said all along. Okay, so that's that's actually not a too difficult a problem. Uh, it did involve application of both formulas, and and of course, you know, we didn't immediately know what either u or v was equal to. We sort of had to do a bit of solving simultaneously. Um, so you know, substituting in here and and sort of whittling this formula down to to something uh, where we could deal with it. Okay, good. So that'll do for that video. I'll come back and do another one for a more difficult problem.